Hi. Thanks for coming. I wanted to talk because it's Diabetes Awareness Day about an amazing discovery that affected me negatively. And I think if you have type 2 diabetes, this also is something that's bothering you. Okay. The title of this video is Diabetes Type 2 Rat Poison Makes It Happen. What do I mean by that? Well, it turns out that one of the vitamin supplements I've been taking has vitamin D in it. And I didn't know until I read a note from Dr. McCullough, who I subscribe to, where he said that uh, vitamin D is rat poison. And I sort of blinked. And it turns out that's true. I'm going to post a link in the description so you can go there and see it for yourself. If you've been following my video, which I'll also post a link on uh, neuropathy, diabetes cure in one day, four cents a day, you know that I talk about alkaline water. And this is, you know, 2013. Here it is, 2016. My A1C, when I went in March, was uh, still at 6.2. Not high, but it's all still outside of the range of normal. But it's a lot better than 11 when I was in the hospital. I didn't realize back then when I went into the hospital that I'd been taking a milk diet and vitamins that all had vitamin D. And so anyway, I, I saw this video by Dr. Mercola and I says, well, is I so I went and looked up some stuff on vitamin D, which you can also do. I encourage you to do that. What uh, I found when I went to do a comparison of well, first of all, vitamin D is necessary for good health. Okay. No doubt about it. There's studies, and if you go to Life Extension, they'll tell you, "Oh, yes, it's if you have a, if you have too low of vitamin D, you die more often. There's a higher mortality rate if you're short of vitamin D." So this is not saying that you should get rid of the vitamin D completely. Okay, so anyway, I went and I looked at this. I went to the American Diabetes Association for the symptoms, and I'm going to put the symptoms and the link to that page so you can go see for yourself. Then I went to the Vitamin D Council or whatever. I'll put the link for that, and found the symptoms for overdosing with vitamin D. And lo and behold, there are many, many things that correspond. So much so that I think that people that have Crohn's disease also fall within this category. That's why it's in the tag and you're looking at it because of that. So let me tell you what I found out, okay? Vitamin D has a half-life, okay? Every supplement does. And if 
the half-life or the amount of uh, vitamin D that you get rid of by metabolizing it is less than the intake, then you're going to have higher and higher levels of vitamin D. Okay, why is that important? The action of vitamin D as a rat poison doesn't kill the rat immediately. The rat consumes the bait that has the vitamin D in it. Okay, it builds up in the system over a couple of days. So the rat doesn't ever figure out that the vitamin D is having an effect on it, otherwise it would have avoided it. Doesn't know. Well, the same thing is happening with you. You take too much vitamin D, you're going to get the symptoms of diabetes. Well, and the thing is, diabetes is a progressive disease. You start off with some symptoms and it gets worse over time. Vitamin D overdosing, same thing. Okay. And I think what the problem is, for instance, I have I've been taking life extension vitamins for a while. I switched from Trader Joe's, okay, because I thought this would be better. But lo and behold, the vitamin D is higher. It's over 500% of the minimum daily requirement. Here I have Trader Joe's calcium magnesium vitamin D. It's only 125%. I started taking these and my blood sugar went up. What was very strange is, is that over a period of time, I figured as so I do intermittent fasting, so you you so you can which means I don't eat, I try not to eat after one or two in the afternoon. And don't eat again until seven or eight. Okay, and there's that's to induce a state called autophagy. Okay, which means that the body switches over and goes into hyperdrive to get rid of toxins. Oh, I just, you can go look at my uh, other video to get more of a sense of that. I have a course um, on Udemy. Okay, so so this was very strange to have my blood sugar in the morning go up, and it wasn't excessive. Okay, it wasn't two hundred. It went I, before I started the uh, life extension. I was getting readings as low as one hundred and three, hundred and eight, hundred and seven. Okay, all of a sudden I was up to one twenty one. And what was funny is that, oh, I said, okay, that's okay, something, maybe I ate some pizza, I've been eating pizza, I've been eating a normal diet, a Western diet, just doing the autophagy, the intermittent fasting. So, and then one day I was up to 137, and the next day 145. Okay, so I said, okay, well, maybe I'm just getting sloppy with the intermittent fasting. So one, so one day I decided, okay, uh, I would make sure that I got the necessary 16 to 18 hours to induce the autophagy, which means you don't eat anything for 16 to 18 hours. I just drank water. And in the morning, my blood sugar was 127, not the 135, 145. I said, oh, okay. And that, so I said, okay, well, I'll wait an hour because normally 
what happens is, is that the blood sugar continues to go down the longer you fast. So I waited an hour. And by God, it had gone up to 139. Okay. Sort of a shock. Okay, so finally Dr. Mercola's video came along. I investigated. And I stopped taking vitamin D completely, except for milk, which I have in the coffee in the morning. So it has vitamin D, but not much comparatively to other people. Okay, so slowly my blood sugar came down, and like today it was 119. Okay, so what does this mean for you? I mean, if you've got high blood sugar, all the literature suggests that vitamin D is correlated with uh, sugar regulation. So too little is a problem. I'm just saying too much is a problem. Okay. One of the things that I would advise you to do is go look if you're taking how much vitamin D you're taking from what sources. And I think you'll be surprised how much there is. Okay, well, what we need really is a, a double-blind study to determine if this is true. Okay, science, science, right? Well, I don't, I didn't, I figured this out and I said, well, I don't really want to do that. So what I did is I just went and looked in my diet to see what sources of vitamin D there were and I was surprised. I ended up tossing eight different bottles. I stopped taking it. My blood sugars come down. So you can do the same. Because what I would do if I was in your situation and you had the high vitamin D, what I would do is I would just stop taking everything that has vitamin D in it, including your supp your multivitamin supplement. I'd go, so I went to Trader Joe's and I want, uh, instead of buying their multivitamin with everything in it, I bought the B vitamins only. So I'm still doing that. It was like about five or six bucks. And then take your blood sugar and wait for a week. My guess is that your blood sugar is going to come down dramatically. And the longer you, you get off of it, the lower it's going to go. To me, that's a pretty good indication of cause and effect. And I think that uh, then if you're knocking, I also recommend you do the, start taking the alkaline water, which helps to get rid of toxins in general. Uh, the Kangen machine, which makes alkaline water, is a recognized the Japanese version of the Food and Drug Administration as a device that helps people get better, and so they even have the insurance companies paying for the Kangen machine. They're expensive, but I have a, a, a thing for four cents a day that you can replicate most of the things about the Kangen machine by using baking soda. I think if you do those things, it's hard to be the price. Four cents a day and Really, you're not going to be any out any more money for the B vitamins than for the, the vitamins with the D3 in two weeks. You know, 
in my mind, it's worth a shot. I'm, co I'm continuing. I'm feeling better every day since I stopped taking them. Thank you for listening.